Hi, and welcome to another episode of Paltex Tech Lightning. Today, I have a topic which everyone seems to struggle with in Azure. I'm going to talk about Azure Private DNS Resolvers and how they work in practice. At first glance, it seems very straightforward as how they need to be solutioned. But the more you dig into the subject, the more confused you will be. And I'm here to show you how it has to be done, how it has to be solutions, and which pitfalls to fall out for. So, let's get started. Here we go. Before we dive into Azure Private DNS Resolvers, we need to look at DNS in general for Azure. We'll put up an environment with three subscriptions, a hub and two spokes, which is fairly standard and common. Now we also need to have an on-premise environment with connectivity through either VPN or an express route to the hub. There's a local DNS server in the on-premise environment. In Azure, you can set up a pass service, any of them. But for this example, we will set up an Azure SQL database in one spoke and a PostgreSQL database in the other one. Let's, however, first zoom into the SQL database. Upon creation, you get a DNS name for the service, which always ends with database.windows.net. We have a bunch of users on premise who would also like to connect to this Azure SQL database. They put in the DNS name in the client sql10.database.windows.net. They click on connect. The connection will work as this company has a transparent proxy. But there's one big problem. Resolving the DNS name of the server will give it a public IP address. The users are then connecting through the internet, which for this company will break all security policies. This is not a desired situation. But we have a simple solution for this that we all know about, namely private endpoints. A private endpoint provides an IP address of the virtual network where it's located in for the specific pass service. This IP address is then usually routable from on-premise through the express route to the SQL service. To store the IP address of this private endpoint, we will set up an Azure private DNS zone. We create a private DNS zone named private link database.windows.net and when creating the private endpoint, this DNS entry with its IP address is recorded here. In addition, we also link this private DNS zone to the virtual network in the hub. This is where the problem, or as I would say, the fun starts. You cannot query this Azure private DNS zone directly from on-premise. It has to be linked to a virtual network in Azure, and only then can it be queried by the Azure Global DNS service. We link it to the virtual network in the hub, which means any devices in the specific VNet is able to query the private DNS zone. In the past, we used to set up virtual machines used as DNS forwarders for this purpose. They connect and talk directly to Azure Global DNS, which is able to query the private DNS zone as it is linked to that specific VNet. There have been progress made in the world of Azure. We no longer need virtual machines as there is now a service called Azure Private DNS Resolvers. For this, we need two subnets, one for inbound endpoints and one for outbound. Initially, we only get the inbound endpoint here as this gets an IP address from the subnet which it's located in. On the DNS Resolver on-premise, you then set a conditional forwarder for the Azure domain. So we say all the requests for database.windows.net should go and be resolved by this IP address. And that's the IP address of the Azure Private DNS Resolver inbound endpoint. The flow will now go something like this. First, a request for SQL10 database.windows.net is sent from the user's on-premise to its local DNS server. The local DNS server has a conditional forwarding for this domain and it sends it to the inbound endpoint in Azure, who is then able to handle it further. Since the private DNS zone in Azure is linked to the VNet where the inbound endpoint is, the request is sent to the Azure Global DNS, who is then able to respond with the correct IP address. As you can see, we now have a great framework for name resolving. How do we enable it with PostgreSQL private endpoint to be resolved to a local IP address? Well, simple, we use the same principle. We create an Azure private DNS zone. For PostgreSQL, the name of this zone has to be postgres.database.com azure.com. For each Azure service, remember this, there's a special zone which has to be created and that name of the zone is available in the Microsoft documentation. 
And we just link this zone to the virtual network where the Azure Private DNS Resolver reside. A conditional forwarder as the last piece of the puzzle. Conditional forwarder of this domain is added to the on-premise DNS server. So now when the request from on-premise goes to the PostgreSQL domain, on-premise DNS sends it on to the Azure Private DNS Resolver inbound endpoint. We are far from done yet, so let's keep on adding another layer of complexity. How about we install a virtual machine in the spoke over there? This virtual machine, it needs to be able to resolve the IP address of the SQL database. Let's say we want it to resolve the private IP address. One way to solve this is to link the Azure Private DNS zone to this virtual network. This way, the virtual machine will query Azure Global DNS, who is able to fetch the results from the private DNS zone. We, this is all fine, but let's say the virtual machine also needs to resolve host names on premise. This will not be solved by linking any private DNS zone. Instead, we have a much more elegant solution where we do not link, need to link any zones to any virtual networks. We are now entering the area of Azure Private DNS Outbound Endpoint. Here you can create rule sets which can be used for name resolution. Each rule set can contain a maximum of thousand different rules. For this setup we explained, we'll start with one rule set and in that rule set we'll put one rule. And in the rule we will say the domain database.windows.net should use the IP address of the inbound private endpoint. This means that name resolution will up in the inbound endpoint, which will be able to query the Azure Global DNS and return the correct result. However, there's one more step we need to take. In order to, for this flow to work, we need to link this rule set to the spoke virtual network where the virtual machine reside. So every time the virtual machines try to connect to SQL 10 database windows.net, this rule is then applied. It's applied because it's linked to the virtual network. Azure Global DNS hands it over to the inbound endpoint and the name is resolved correctly. Remember, for this part to work, there's no need to have any network pairing. You just need to link the rule set to the virtual network. The beauty comes now as this virtual machine also need to resolve on-premise names. Now we are starting to see the elegance of this solution. We just add an extra rule in the rule set of the outbound endpoint. The following rule will be added. The domain onpremise.com should use the IP address of the on-premise DNS server. When the virtual machine in Azure, it tries to resolve a name uh, with onpremise.com, the rules are already linked to the virtual network. So the request will go to the on-premise DNS server. It will then return the correct IP address. This is done all without any network pairing. And the actual flow for this in Azure is the Azure Virtual Machine contacts Azure Global DNS, who then sees we have a rule set applied. So we use the outbound endpoint of the private DNS resolver to contact the on-premise DNS, the on-premise DNS server will see the IP address of the outbound endpoint coming in. It's important if you need to open the firewall. Outbound endpoint is the one that will be connecting to your on-premise DNS server. With this solution, we have name resolution for all of Azure. Everything in the Azure environment and the on-premise environment as well. It's very scalable. You simply need to link the rule set to the virtual network. If the environment scales with multiple servers, you keep adding the same process and just link the rule set and your all set name resolution is working immediately. This is really awesome, right? But is it as good as it seems or are there any downsides to it? Well, definitely there are downsides. There are some things you need to keep in mind. Remember, one rule set can have multiple rules, but a virtual network can only be linked to one rule set. So, you need to have a one rule set with all the rules in and everything then gets applied to the VNet. Remember, also, it's a regional service. You can't mix and match resources and so on for other region. And this setup then works really well when you have everything and the situation placed in one region. 
You cannot use the following IP address ranges for the endpoints 10.0.1.0 until 10.0.16.255. Remember that. Thirdly, a subnet must be a minimum of slash 28 address space or a maximum of slash 24. It's unclear at the moment how you need to scale this. There's not really any documentation or anywhere mentioned is when you need to pick a slash 24 over a slash 28. So it's a little bit up for grabs. Last, um, a subnet is dedicated to its inbound endpoint and one to its outbound. So it's a full dedicated subnet. And not last, but uh, the final one is IPv6 subnets are not supported. There's one more thing we need to look at, and that's the cost of hosting this party in Azure. If we strictly look at the infrastructure cost of the Azure private DNS resolvers, they are actually very pricey. So we're opening up the pricing calculator, we can see this. We look up Azure DNS, and the SKU has to be set to DNS private resolver. We can here then define the amount of inbound and outbound endpoints along with the amount of rule sets that we need. Remember, each rule set can have thousand rules in them, so it's not really the pricey part. If we just add one on everything, we see that it adds up to quite a big amount. If we instead of this service would use two virtual machines with Linux and Bind9, the price would be about one third of this. But then we're stuck with an IaaS solution, which needs to conf be configured and installed. Granted, there are of course already marketplace images for this solution, but you still need to manage, maintain and update the virtual machines. Let's get on to a de demo. I feel it's pretty straightforward on how to configure the Azure Private DNS Resolver in the portal, but for completeness sake, we will walk through the process. In the Azure portal, we search for Private DNS Resolvers. We click on Create. We get a fairly standard selection on where we pick subscription, and we select a resource group. As a name, we will call it Tech Lightning Private DNS. Region, we put West Europe. As for virtual network, we pick one which is available. Remember, we need two dedicated subnets here, one for the inbound and one for the outbound endpoint. We click on the next inbound endpoints. Here we can add an endpoint. We put in a name and select a subnet. Once done, we go to outbound endpoints. Here we also add one. Same with inbound, we add a name and we select a subnet. Next up is to add a rule set. Remember, this is for the outbound endpoint. We put a name and select an endpoint which it's attached to. The interesting part are not the rules which can be defined in the rule set. Um, but let's do them anyway. So let's add a rule by clicking on the plus sign. We put a rule name and we call it local DNS resolving. Domain name will be our on-premise domain. Under destination, uh, that's where we will put our local DNS servers. We click on add and on the next screen, we can review the configuration. So let's create the resource. Really, that's all there is to it. If you know the theory behind the Azure Private DNS Resolver, it's very easy to deploy. Now, that was a lot of information to take in, but you should now be able to solution the Azure Private DNS Resolver using private endpoints and on-premise name resolution completely. We have been waiting a long time for this service, but it's finally here. I am also sure that Microsoft will drop the prices in the future, as I personally feel they're maybe a little bit too pricey at the moment. But we will see about that. And until next time, take care. See you.